Now, we had an issue last time with Eevee's camera systems, where they didn't catch certain things. And I proposed that we do something about it. This is still in really early working development, but I'd like to show you guys this. I propose that we take Eevee's cameras, and instead of them having a 80 degree field of view, we turn them into a 135 degree field of view. And I wanted to test this concept before we went full ham and adjusted all the cameras. EV activate, wandering eye protocol. In a previous event, what had happened was EV had struggled to see a person in need. Let me demonstrate to you guys what I mean. If I were to lay down like this and you only saw my legs and it was really this, could you confidently know what's happening? No, you couldn't because you can't see my face, you can't see my expression, you can't see what's happened to me. That's all you see, just flailing legs. And that was the problem that Evie had. Evie had an issue with identifying what had happened to someone without any other context clues. Her field of view is very limited, i.e. she can't see everything at once, right? And the problem with a lot of you know, technology nowadays is just like, when you work with a certain system, it only understands that system. If you only work with samples taken in a normal flat field of view, you're only gonna be able to work with systems that understand that data. I.e., if I take a photo of my face like this and I teach Evie to recognize my face, she'll only recognize my face to a high degree of confidence if it's using the same sort of field of view. Now, if I take like a GoPro, for example, that fish lenses the, the, the view, right? It, it kind of like distorts the view a little bit. It becomes harder, not impossible, but harder for a system. It becomes harder for it to understand what it's seeing because things are distorted. But obviously with a, a field, like a wider field of view, you get distortion, but you get more data, you get more information, you get more context clues. Now, I've been thinking about how to solve this issue and I've come up with a clever solution. If we take the GoPro, which GoPro, by the way, I, I, I give full props to GoPro for this because they did a wonderful job with this. What GoPro does is they have a camera lens that's always in a fish-eyed field of view. A and this fish-eyed field of view is always on, but they have software on their cameras that allows them to scale in the image that they're seeing so they can digitally adjust the field of view. So that if you wanted to record an, an 80 field of view, a normal camera field of view, you could do so. But if you wanted to, you could also record in a wide field of view using the same lens. How is that possible? Scaling and dynamics. Don't even worry about that. The thing is, all you gotta know is it works really well. The thing that also all works really well is that with this technology, GoPro is able to scale in what we see. So it's essentially zooming in to just this portion of the screen. And all this extra footage that it's collecting on the side actually is what it uses to image stabilize everything that's happening really, really fast, almost real time. So it uses all that extra data to move the screen around so that whatever happens, kind of like the chicken, a chicken's head, it always stays centered. I thought we could apply this to Eevee as well. So Eevee would now be able to see everything in a wide field of view, but she'll also be able to focus and narrow her search down to just what she's seeing. Observe. Eevee, activate camera tracking. Affirmative. Allow me to introduce you guys to the next evolution of tracking. Oh, 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 come down here. Come, come down here. Come down a little bit. Just a little bit down. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. Stop. Okay. So, wherever I go, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. Shh, easy, easy, easy. Wherever I go, even if I go down here. <laughs> yes. Come, 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 come. 
Oh, no, no, come back! Go, come back! Oh, come back! No, come back! 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 What the heck? <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> well, there's still okay. Now there's still a lot of bugs to work out in the system. It's not perfect. <laughs> but my hope is that we can convert this to a very very wide field of view, so that Evie collects data. Okay, hold on, it's jittering. Eevee, deactivate camera tracking. Affirmative. Now, my hope is that Eevee will be able to capture a super wide field of view, i.e. I'm thinking greater than 150 degrees. And that allows her to almost see 180 degree field of view. Could you imagine if you had one camera that can see nearly 180 degrees field of view, capturing all of the data, all that information, if you fall outside your front door, even if you don't think you're in camera range, you're still in camera range, but Evie's not actively watching you. However, she's able to use that information as an additional point of context when needed, i.e. when the confidence rate is really low. It says, hey, I didn't see you fall on this. Let me check the rest of the data to see what happened on camera. Down here, she can see what happened technically off camera. I can even reverse distort the central view so that the central view is, is flat. You no, know, it looks like a flat image. That way we don't have to retrain things like facial recognition. We don't have to retrain things like um, pain detection or like minute differences in body sounds, like body um, changes. Evie, you there? For you engineer, always. Evie, activate camera tracking. Affirmative. She scopes in the field of view based on where I am. Needs a little bit of work. Needs a, needs a little bit of work. But ideally, ideally, wherever I am in the field of view is where she can scope in her, her, pretty much her finder, and use that for data analysis. That's kind of how I envision it happening. Now, the cool thing about this, Evie, deactivate camera tracking. Affirmative. The cool thing about this is that, let's just say she was looking at a camera view like this big, and she only saw this much data. And she's like, I am unsure about what just happened. I don't I, I did not see what happened and so I am unsure she could actually widen her field of view from the recordings or move it around to be more sure of what she's looking at she's like if this is all she sees and she's like I'm not sure if Kenny is wearing a, la a lavalier microphone she can actually move her field of view to check so ideally she would have 140 degrees field of view, almost 180 in an ideal world, where she can be like, oh, you know what? I didn't see someone fall, but I, I think someone fell. Let's check. Let's widen our field of view and let's check down here. Let's check up here. Let's check over in this corner. It will allow her to have high precision and high accuracy because of the, the smaller field of view. Uh, sorry, the, the smaller uh, viewfinder. Uh, but will allow her to access data that's beyond what she's looking at. That's that's the solution I kind of came up with. So the hard limitation of any system is the hardware that it has. Hard limitation. You know, if the camera can't see everything, the camera can't see anything. And, and that's the problem. It, it's almost like if you give someone too much to see, it, it gets confusing. But if you narrow it in, and then you let them selectively see, it's a little bit more focused, you know? It's a little bit more precise, and that's what we want. We want precision. We want, we want them to be 
precise. I would rather say, for example, this is all you see. As opposed to, this is all you can see. Do you know what I mean? There's a difference between those two statements. This is all you see, and this is all you can see. This is all you see implies that there's more data that can be analyzed, more data that can be seen. But this is all you can see means that there's that's it. There's nothing else. It's also a human issue because when people are in pain, we do things that are erratic. You know, when people are suffering or in trouble, we do things that are erratic. You know, they, they don't make any sense. Yeah, the, the thing, Bite Cube, is I could have 10 cameras on a three axis gimbal in the middle of the room, and I could have all of that there. I could. And it would be complicated. But it would solve all of our current issues of not seeing things. The problem then becomes cost, size, power, complexity. You know, you gotta imagine someone having this in their home. So like privacy, how it looks in the middle of the room, little things like that become an issue. You know, we could have all these things, but I'm, I'm trying to get it to the point where someone can just set it and forget it sort of deal as opposed to being like, there's a giant security camera in the corner of my office or in the corner of every room in my house. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I've been working on for the last four days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything hurts. Look at me, Evie.